Well, the police have literally cut my house off from all directions. So people who even who, who want to visit me, they have to actually go through the police checkpoints. So, you know, it means there's going to be yet another operation. I have had about three or four operations on my house. Uh, but this time, they, the, the government announced that there were 40 terrorists holed up in my house. And that, that was going to be the pretext. I mean, they are, they are, by terrorists, I suppose, they mean the, the violence that was sparked after your last arrest. I mean, just to clear this up, I mean, do, did anybody in your organisation have any role in organising that, in orchestrating that? Did they know it was happening? Did they take part in it? What were the events? I'm picked up. My people are beaten up. I get hit on my head by the... Uh, military, what are the rangers are belong to the military, inside the High Court of Islamabad. But in 27 years of my party's existence, we have never indulged in violent protests. Seven and a half thousand people have been arrested in my party. All the senior leadership has been arrested. You know, uh, it's the most unprecedented crackdown going on. But, the, uh, but you know the history of Pakistan since its inception has been of the army stepping in against democratically elected leaders at different times. I mean, can Pakistan ever break this cycle of an army that always moves when it's not happy with what's going on? Look, you know, we, we started off as a security state. There was this dependence on the Pakistan army and we, you know, we were proud of our army because we felt that that was the only reason that we were secure. But unfortunately, things change, time evolve. Uh, it, it no longer is the time where you, you can have a hybrid system where the power belongs to the military and the responsibility belongs to the elected prime minister. This sort of hy hybrid system just cannot deliver. So we are a big governance disaster. Too many Pakistani leaders have been killed in political violence. Do you now fear for your life? Uh, I've had two attempts on my life. Uh, the reason why my life is in danger is because uh, all the 2012 uh, parties coalition, the lead, our lead between them and us is, has grown so wide now. Uh, uh, since we were ousted from power in the last few months, out of the 37 by-elections, we have swept 30 of them. They do not want to see me in power. And, and therefore, uh, either they will, uh, you know, the thing is either to remove me through getting me, in, put me in jail, disqualify me, or I have been killed. You've spent 30 years pledging to rid Pakistan of corruption. Have you failed ultimately? No, well, 27 years I started my movement, which was for rule of law, basically. When you don't have rule of law, you have corruption. Reason why the developing world is, is poor, because they don't have rule of law. The powerful are above law. And when you look back at your time in power, do you think there is more that you could or should have done to take on these powerful forces within the country? Well, with hindsight, you know, when I won the election and I had a coalition government with a thin majority, I should have called for re-elections. I should not have, uh, uh, you know, taken on that government because, look, if you want to bring about a change and reform and take on the vested interest, which means bring the powerful under the rule of law, answer is, if you want to bring about a change and rule of law in a country, you must have a clear mandate from the people so that that, that gives you the, the power to make the reforms. Imran Khan, thank you very much indeed. Pleasure. Thank you for your time. Well, our foreign affairs correspondent, Sekunda Kamani, is in Pakistan for us now. What's the latest and what happens if he is arrested again? Well, Krishnan, the latest we're hearing from outside Imran Khan's house is that there are still some police who are stationed there, but the number has been reduced. It doesn't seem as if they're going to make an attempt to enter that house tonight, although, of course, the situation is fluid. Imran Khan, for what it's worth, does have bail in all the cases 
he's currently facing. He's in fact due in court uh, tomorrow. Certainly a major crackdown against his supporters has been taking place in recent days with thousands of them uh, detained. Uh, we've seen these bizarre scenes where some senior politicians from his party have been arrested, then ordered to be released by the courts, only to be detained once again almost immediately by the security forces. The military here has said that it's going to try some of those accused of taking part in the unrest um, in its own courts and well uh, many people believe that ultimately it's it's the military that's driving this crackdown which has an element of irony to it because prior to this well the military was accused of supporting Imran Khan when he was in government and supporting a crackdown on his political opponents the people who make up the current government now the big question really is how can this current standoff be resolved because at the moment it seems as if neither side wants to back down so come to Kamani in Islamabad.